One of the many trademarks my next guest had when he was on television was the unique way that his show opened. Those of us who were old enough to remember uh, his weekly show, and I thought I would surprise him by showing, uh, this will be a bit of nostalgia for us, a piece of film that we found um, before when we invited him to come and see if you can just guess who this person is. Lady Dunlap, you may have children of your own one. Of them. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing America's number one television star, the man you get a big kick out of every Tuesday night, Milton Burrow. <laughs> I just got my brain. What's up, Doc? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing television's number one star, the man America discovered, Milton Berg. What you're sitting on? Yeah. Montauk Point. Montauk Point? That's my cushion. <laughs> I thought it felt very funny. <laughs> where did you get those, uh, where did you get those things? Well, we found those in the archives. Archives. Yeah. In the archives, yeah. Is that yeah. the way I look? Do you know how long ago that is? What Twenty. would the years be on this? Could you tell? I think that's uh, back in 1951. Yeah. 51. Yeah. I'm thrilled in seeing it. <laughs> You I, have, I have been so thrilled since I won Tody Fields on the dating game. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. When, when, there's a woman's laugh that you could hear night after, I mean, week after week on that show that would ride over the other laughter. Was that well, intentional? Well, uh, there was uh, one shot that uh, I don't think they used that I remember when I used to come out, I, uh, the audience used to laugh and one woman used to laugh on top and I said, don't laugh, lady, you may have children of your own one of these days. Right. And that, uh, Dinah knew that woman. That was my mother. It was your mother. My I mother, yeah, remember. that's the truth. My mother used to sit in the audience every show and every Tuesday night and laugh them up. And uh, if she sat next to a person like this very lovely lady who's drunk down here, uh, <laughs> and she didn't laugh, the lady didn't laugh, even if my mother didn't know her, my mother used to say, laugh it up, laugh it up. Yeah. Every show. So, uh, as in Tuesday's case, your mother came to work with you and... Um well, my mother came around work, anyway, and not only on Tuesdays, she came Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. <laughs> couldn't resist it. And I couldn't resist it. Uh, when you when you think back on the old Texaco theater, I was thinking there... of getting drunk and getting pregnant. That's what I was thinking. Of. <laughs> what? Well, now you know the formula. <laughs> uh, when Never you... drank, but I'd like to be pregnant. What'd you say? N well, <laughs> well, don't look at me. Listen. No. Uh, well, well, that reminds me. How did you decide to wear a dress the first time on television? What? Now, what the hell did you have to ask that for? <laughs> well, I, I mean. Was there a debate over that? Did you ever say, do you think I ought to go well, on television? Well, this is uh, BFW, or... BFW, before Flip Wilson. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I liked to wear dresses at that time, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> 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 Gee, uh, say, if you're gonna, if you're gonna mm -hmm. have a controversial and open I didn't know forum here tonight. <laughs> I knew you were gonna be so revealing, but go on. What'd you say, baby? No, no, I say, uh, you're a very convincing actor. The no, but did they ever say maybe a man shouldn't go on television and dress? Maybe the public isn't ready for that. Um, we had trouble with dresses in those days in early television, the 50s, mm -hmm. and... Uh... <laughs> oh, we are the men of Texaco. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
out the audience right here. I think they did. Was that too extravagant of us to have a siren go off across the street? Just uh, that's a uh, firehouse. That's what a that's funny. That's my point. brother. He was planted. But um, no, that's a real siren. Out that's of a real siren. Texaco siren. Uh, <laughs> how I happen to uh, wear a dress? Well, I don't know. I I uh, used to see vaudeville shows years ago. We used to have great uh, female impersonators and funny ones too. Yeah. Bert Savoy and Jay Brennan and uh, uh, Francis Renault and Julian Elton. But uh, I. Uh, I, I don't know why I wore a dress. I, I was about to say earlier that uh, I don't know if Dinah recalls. I don't think. I think Tusi was uh, a Wednesday child at that time. Uh, we had trouble with a dress with Faye Emerson. Do you remember the plunging neckline trouble? Faye Emerson's uh, incredible plunging neckline. Remember yes. That? Yeah. So that sort of gave me an idea to put on a dress with uh, a plunging, not with a real plunging neckline, because they couldn't see anything. Why not? Because no matter how much money I'd have, I'd always be flat busted. Is that the joke you want to know? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, shut up. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll, tell, we'll be back. Well, when those come into your mind, do you have a choice of whether to say them or not, or do they just come out? Uh, <laughs> no choice. No, I just do it. That's all. We have to take a message. We'll be right back. <laughs> ABC Sports brings you the action, pageantry, and thrills of collegiate football. The top teams from all sections of the country in the season's key games. NCAA football every week on ABC. The man who lives here is interested in history, where civilization is going, the great things men have done in the past. But his interest is not just scholarly. When it comes to 20th century history, he's been in the middle of it. He was there with the leaders at historic moments of World War II. He was there in 1960 as a moderator of the Kennedy-Nixon debates. His profession and his stature in that profession have kept him at the side of the great men of the world. In 30 years as a working newsman, he's won every major award in the field of broadcast journalism. The man who lives here knows a lot about what's going on in the world. And he knows how to share what he knows with you. He's Howard K. Smith, newsman, co-anchor man on the ABC Evening News. Curtis and Roger Moore star as the Persuaders tomorrow night on ABC. Yep. Air travel arranged through and a promotional fee paid by Pan Am, who brings you these words about the Pacific. Geisha, Pagoda, Sarong, Kangaroo, Luau, Undiscovered, and 747s. Pan Am, the Pacific expert. Here we are. She doesn't want to light the cigarette. Did you see what She just holds it. That's a step in the right direction, though. A step in the right. <laughs> Enjoy it in good health. Thank you. Enjoy it in good health? What the hell does that mean? Well, it's just sort of, I don't know, it's just something to say, you know. You know how, haven't you ever had that thing pop into your mind where you say something you don't know what it means? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I remember we were talking one time on the air, and you were making a very serious point about something, and then you did a gag at the end, and then you caught yourself, and you said, I wish I didn't always have to do a gag at the end. But, I don't um, usually always have to do a joke at the end. I think yeah. uh, I've been at Dinah's house for dinner. She's been at our house for dinner. We've had very serious discussions about certain things. Yeah. There wasn't one laugh. Though I was trying to be funny, they didn't laugh. <laughs> You know, do you have any idea what that power is you have over an audience in a nightclub? This is a silly question, but they always just say to me, you've got to see Burl with a live audience, and even in spite of all your television success, you've got to see him with an audience in a club. And I did once, and it was dynamite. You came out and you just knocked them out, and you rattle them one way or another, and you, you just have terrific command on the stage. What is it? Where does it come from? Is it in your genes? Do you drink before you go on? What, how do you do it? <laughs> If I drank, I'd be pregnant, right? <laughs> All right. No, I... Uh, uh, it's an unanswerable I don't, I don't, question. No, I, I'll tell you the answer. You ask me a question. I'll ask you a question. Where do I get the energy and drive? I guess. I guess I'm just hammy, that's all. I Just give me a loud microphone, mm -hmm. three people in the audience, a bottle of old polymol. Not the... The wet head was dead. Right? You know what polymol? No, what is it? That's grease we used to put on our hair years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't remember that. No. Um, well, forget about it. Anyway... Um, <laughs> Uh, I need an audience, that's all. I just yeah. put me in front of an audience, and I guess it's infectious, and I just like to, to punch, and uh, I, I love to hear an audience laugh. Yeah. And I, uh, let's just say that I'm a ham, okay? Okay. But yeah, I heard someone... do, you, do you feel that it's important for the really great, great comedians to have come, in order to, to have that great comic sense to have come from an impoverished background? <sighs> No, I don't think that's the answer to it. To the, I think the answer is the, uh, the uh, dedication and uh, not an impoverished background. I, I think a theatrical background is more important. I think, like for example, uh, all due respect to uh, Mr. C here and all the talk shows and all the comics or comedians that are on the air today uh, with this new generation, they had no place to flop meaning, uh, all due respect to towns like Steubenville and Scranton that are watching, uh, <laughs> little towns that we could break in an act yeah. and uh, have that background behind us of knowing what not to do and what to do. And I don't think it comes from being poor or anything. You know or what I mean? being deprived. And deprived. Being... No, I don't think so. I... a lot of poor people aren't funny, and a lot of uh, people with... There are well, some, I, there are some I wasn't who, too... Uh, uh, you know, I didn't come from very... Wealthy family, I had to sleep with my four brothers. I clearly, I, have, I never knew what it was to sleep alone until after I got married. <laughs> but, uh, That's a very good joke. Uh, have you ever explained why Uncle Milty, or whether you're actually anybody's uncle or not, or is that, that's a mystery, like Mrs. Calabash with Jimmy Durante? Where the uh, Uncle Milty, Uncle Milty. Uh, tag came, the label? Well, that's a strange story. Uh, when I started back in 48, 49 on television, we were on at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, and the kiddies used to stay up to, you know, it was new, it was a phenomenon, a whole television thing. And uh, as I walked the streets or got in a cab or someplace, a mother or a father came over to me and said, listen, Mr. Burl, you keep my kid up. You won't go to sleep until your show is over and it's 9 o'clock and I've got to get up for school. Can you tell the kids to please go to sleep? And I said, well, I... Uh, in those days, I wasn't allowed to do it. the FCC ruling. You know? I said, no, I, I can't do it, but uh, I wish I could help you. So we started a new season, I think, in 1950, and we had a young lady who was our uh, social producer, and she timed the show and gave us what we call a back timing of how much we needed to spread for laughs and everything. And she said, oh, we need only, um, only uh, we need uh, four minutes spread for laughs. So when we got down to the finish of the show, and I said, well, thank you, and I was about to sing near you and sign off, and from under the camera, the floor man went like this. Seven, under. Meaning we had seven minutes to go. You thought you were oh, nearly over and you had seven oh, we minutes? We thought we were over, oh. and we had seven minutes to go yet. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> this is live. <laughs> Now, don't forget, this is live. It's not yeah. tape, right? Yeah. We can edit it with tape. It was a live show. And I said, seven minutes? And went, went like that. So I said, well, folks, <laughs> what's next, you know? I don't know what to say. Oh. So uh, 
I thought I was talking and talking, and I said, is that it? To the fellow, he said, no, five more to go. <laughs> so uh, I grabbed the chair, oh, came out on the stage, sat on the chair, and uh, it came to my mind what this lady had said to me, or a gentleman on the street, and I said, I have something that's, this was like off the cuff, I was out living. I said, uh, uh, you children that are watching the show tonight, uh, there, and I don't know what to say, I says, there isn't any more television after nine o'clock. It's the first thing that started with a lie. <laughs> so I said, so please, and I didn't want to say, so please listen to Milton or please listen to Mr. Burrell. So I said, so will you listen to your, and I ad-libbed, uh, your Uncle Milty. And I happened to just say it. Yeah. So I settled for that. And the next day I went up to Boston to do a benefit for the Catholic Youth Organization. And they gave me a parade in the street where I was sitting on the top of the car in an open car. And as I passed, there were some guys digging a ditch. And they said to me, Hi, Uncle Milty. And there I am again. It's the siren again. It's the siren. So they said, Hi, Uncle Milty. So it hit my mind. I said, Hi, Uncle Milty. If they heard it in Boston, oh, shut up with that thing. Did you plant these sirens here? No, I wouldn't do that. The last time it hit, it hit Helen Hayes the last time when she was in the middle uh, of the piece. So, so that was Uncle Milty for then on. Wait till it stops. <laughs> You're getting less in showmanship when the uh, siren is no, up. No, okay. uh, that uh, started it off, and from then on, I call myself Uncle Milty, and I, I wrote all the safety songs for the kids. You know, uh, uh, Uncle Milty says goodnight, please. So that's so. Yeah. To this day, as I come in the stage door tonight, some lady with silver hair, gray hair, she walked over and she says, "Hi, Uncle Milty." Mm -hmm. <laughs> then another woman, just a few weeks ago, introduced me to a little child. She must have seen me. The mother. Yeah. She's about 30 years old. She introduced me to the child. was about four or five years old. He says, Charles, say hello to Uncle Milty. And the kid looked at me and says, I got no uncle. <laughs> so it's good Please. and it's bad. No, yeah, it's very yeah. good. What I want to know is what became of the woman who timed the show wrong and you ended up with seven minutes uh, to go. What uh, did you call her? She is now in Bingington. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, she... she uh, She's, she's around the place. What, what went wrong, do you suppose? Did I she read know. a watch wrong? Or? I think she, she timed it wrong. It happens. It happens. What a nightmare. That must have been your... If you had any kind of recurrent bad dream with that show... It no, well, I was wrong. thankful to her that uh, she had timed the show wrong or I would have never gotten the label of the tag. It the turned movie. out all right. Yes. Yeah, well. You work well under pressure. In fact, when we come back, let's put you under some pressure. Let's let the audience ask you anything they can think of. Okay. I'm we'll be back waiting. after this message sure. from our okay. local station. <laughs> What kind of father steals for a living? I got a call from Reno this morning. You wrote some checks, all bad. They want it by start a business tomorrow. For God's sakes, where are you going to get $8,000 overnight? Two-time losers are potential three-time losers. You don't think I can make it without stealing? Richard Crenna, Angie Dickinson, Cameron Mitchell. Who are you? Thief. Only one thing worse than a crook. That's a clumsy crook. The friends of a man lynched for cheating return to avenge his death. Robert Mitchum. <laughs> Dean Martin. Six out of six. Can't do better than that. Five card stud. ABC Sports brings you the action, pageantry, and thrills of collegiate football. The top teams from all sections of the country in the season's key games. NCAA football every week on ABC. I just don't want to. I just, Why do I, I ask I, you I to just, dance? I just don't, don't want to dance. dance with you. 
<laughs> if I'm going to wear a dress, you're going to dance. <laughs> well, if you will, I will. Uh, with the, uh, who has a question? Let's take a question. From the this gentleman? gentleman, yes. Yeah. I can't hear you, sir. <laughs> no, not you, this fellow here. <laughs> Sorry, sir. If you knew somebody, you'd be sitting here. But go ahead. I want to know, Mr. Burrow, where'd you get your boots? I can't hear you, sir. Your boots. Where did you get your boots? My boots? They're fantastic. I had them... <laughs> had them made out in California. They're very made nice. in California. Thank you. Well, that's shoe business. <laughs> oh, what oh. about the man who... Oh, sis putting... yourself. Well, what, no, this I, gentleman, uh, yeah. this lady. Gentleman. Oh, gentleman, I'm sorry. <laughs> there you are. It's got long hair, I can't... No, I didn't mean that. No, I, I, can't, I can't see very well. Yeah, why don't you uh, darken your hair? Why don't I what? Yeah, why don't you darken your hair? Or do you think you look more distinguished with gray hair? Why don't, I why don't you darken your hair? Or do you think you look more distinguished that way? No, I'll tell you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> why? Hold on. Oh, smart. Very good. I'll answer. Come over here. Oh, all right. I'll stand next to you. Why don't I darken my hair? I don't think I should. No, I don't think I should. I, I think uh, to be natural and be, you know, you get a little, put a little mileage on, stay that way. Yeah. Can I ask him a question? Yes. Why do you darken yours? Why don't, why don't you cut yours? <laughs> what about the man who, who, who was the first man that you uh, brushed off done. there? Up. Yes. yes good. Remember, remember the days in the Alhambra, Riverside, and Palace in 1920? <laughs> remember the days? I used, I used okay. to see you and wait for you to come back off the road, the BF Geek. Right. Break it. Those were the days. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. I'll tell you, that's that's a good question. <laughs> Was going to say. He, man said, do you what remember the days you played the Alhambra in the Riverside? That was back in the late 20s. Yes, sir, I remember. Thank you very much for mentioning. It's my uncle. Next. Uh, uh, yes, the lady right in the same row as that man. Uh, what do you regret not having done in your life? What have I regretted you, not no, having done do in my life? What do you regret not having done, done in, in your, your life? life? Uh, that's a good question. I think what I have regretted is that I really never had a a childhood. I was listening to Tuesday speaking before and uh, of her childhood. I, I never had a childhood. I was yeah. too busy fighting with the drummer. <laughs> and, uh, How old are you? Wait till we give you a mic. Man's answering a serious well, question. Well, now I'm answering a serious question for this lady, oh, please. Uh, I regret not having a, a great childhood, you know, of I played ball and all that, but not enough. I was in show business, just acting, putting on makeup, right? And that was, that's the big regret I have. In now, the it's balcony It's not gonna happen to my son. In the balcony. How old am I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm 46, sir. Pal, you'll never live to be as old as you look. That I'll tell you that. <laughs> what about the man there with the microphone near The man you? with the microphone. In the balcony. Uh, being you dominated television and uh, were and still are known as uh, Mr. Television in the 50s, don't you ever get the itch to come back and try to dominate the 70s the same way? Uh, yes, that's that... Uh, uh, 20 year itch, not seven year itch. That, uh, yes I do. You mean do a series? Uh, no, a variety show like you did. A variety show, a series. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I did have a series, and the reason that I'm off now is simple as ABC. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I would love to do it. It's a grind. I think I've uh, paid my dues, but I, I, I love it. I really do. And uh, my last program, by the way, we went on and off so quick, they thought it was a news bulletin. <laughs> All right, fair enough. This man right here. Uh, Mr. Burrell, did you start as a magician? Did you start as a magician? No, I didn't start as a ma magician. I, uh, I do magic, if that's what you mean. I belong to Society of American Magicians. I started uh, doing magic when I was 10 years old with cards, little baby cards, because my hands were too small. But I, I do magic, but I didn't start as a ma magician. But I saw the greats, from Houdini to Nate Leipzig to all of the greats. Thurston? Ones. Thurston, Blackstone. Mm, I wish I had. Uh, yeah, Mr. You, you, uh, no, I wish I had. I saw Blackstone. I'm going to show you some tricks. 
When? And not about cards, about doing a television show. Oh, all right. Show me with, use this gentleman as an example. Yes, yes sir. Who do you think is funnier, uh, Hope or Crosby? Who do I think is funnier, Hope or Crosby? Right. Well, that's a That's wrong... Bing and Bob. I know it's Bing and Bob. I know. <laughs> you know, the guys who have yes. been in the movies and uh, on the television. Yeah, I know. Uh, he thought I, I meant uh, Bob Crosby or something, and Irving Hope. Um, I, I think that both of them have a great sense of humor when they're together. Uh, you, why did you make that comparison, sir? Just out of curiosity. Uh, of making a comparison, who do I think is funny or hope? I don't think that's a good comparison, okay. because I don't think that Bing Crosby, I think he has a great sense of humor, he's a wit, but I don't think he's funny, funny. I think Bob Hope is a monologist, he is a stand-up, great stand-up comedian, but I, I don't think that's a very good uh, uh, juxtaposed thing. Okay. Do you mind? Did you know that one of... Lee. Next. <laughs> yes. Woody, Woody Allen's first wife used to think that Bob Hope and Bing Crosby were the same person. I mean, absolutely, she thought they were the was same. Was that Hope and that, Crosby on the screen? I don't know how she did it, but she did. One more question. That. Yes, that sir. young lady up there. Speak up, dear, that girl. I think you've... How long have I been off or on? Oh, uh, when did it start? Uh, my tele... You wouldn't believe this, Dick, but I'm going to answer this later. I started on television in 1929. That was the first time I was on television. On the old steam television sets? <laughs> <laughs> yes, practically. I did really a television so. series mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago in 1929 for uh, F.A. Sanabria. They had the, picture tubes then yes, and everything? Yes, they did. But I started uh, back in 1948, June 8th, 1948. That's 23 years. So it'll be 25 years pretty soon. Yeah. We have yes. time for a very short question yes, from that lady, question. a very short lady. Mr. Burrell, who is, um, who is one of the most important people or interesting people that you've ever worked with? Well, that's, most that's easy. Who's one of the most interesting people you've ever worked with? <laughs> that won't take long, will it? Um. <laughs> See, we don't have time Dick for the answer. Dick Cavett, is that oh. all? Man's no, I've worked with many interesting people. Carl Sandberg, I'd say, was very interesting to work with. Really? Yes. We have a, take a message right now. Yes. We'll be right back. Message Thank right you all now. for we'll right back. All's quiet in Sparkle City, Captain Cleanup. Not quite, Kid Coolid. Look there. Leaping lizards! It's Louie the Litterer and his sewer rat gang! Let's see what they're up to! Okay, okay, we're taking over the neighborhood, see? You, Big Daddy Dirt Pile, drop candy and gum wrappers. And you, Sammy the Slop, throw empty cans around. And you, Filthy Frank, foul up the water in the air. Stop! You'll not mess up this town! No! That's it, boys! We're through! <laughs> That's where you belong, in the waste can. We put them in their place, right? <laughs> right. Kids, you too can be a pollution fighter. Never throw trash in the street. Remember, you have to set an example for your parents. Make all America Sparkle City. Put litter in its place. North and south, east and west, young and old, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, black and white and brown and yellow and red. This town, this city, this state, this country bleeds a little every day. They are most important of all human beings whom other human beings loved and needed. <laughs> But all of God's children will be able to join hands. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Open your heart, Sometimes empty your hands, like and roll up your sleeves with the American Red Cross. Here we are. Uh, say, Miss Weld. Yes. You know, I can't help noticing that I forgot something. We came on, we, you showed the bit from the film, or we showed the bit from the film, you talked about it. No one ever mentioned the name of the movie. A Safe Place. A Safe Place. Yes. Who's the director? Henry Jaglum. Is Orson Welles in that? Is that the one yes. you and Orson Welles and were making Jack in Central Nicholson Park? And Philip Proctor and myself and 
few others. Yeah, yeah. When, when Orson Welles was on here, I think they were making that film, because I came through Central Park La one day and the uh, yeah, last park was year. blocked. Yes. Yeah. Did, did, was Orson Welles nice to you? Were you nice to him? Were you afraid of him? He's were you nervous? He's not a person you really get to know like that. You know, uh, yeah. we worked for about three days, and he's, he, I mean, he's really so much bigger than life, and so mm -hmm. uh, that you can't, you can't talk to him as a person. Re I mean, communicate, really. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, you know, I would think it'd be so easy to talk. No, easy, no, yeah. no, well, he was acting but you're also. aware of his legend. You know, he was acting. He was not directing, and yeah. I have the feeling that he would have been much happier directing. I mean, because, sure. he, because he is in total control, and he must have complete autonomy to really feel yeah. relaxed, I think. I think that's um, right, and the directing is what he loves. And don't you, yeah. don't you think he takes the acting job so he can afford to... Direct, uh, I don't think so. You know, because he really likes. I think he likes to act too. Yeah. I don't think he'll ever top himself as a director since Citizen Kane. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. If property comes up, possibly he will. But I think he likes mm -hmm. to act, and as. Uh, but I think he doesn't even like himself for liking to act. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean he doesn't like that part of him that that he he can't help but be drawn into acting. When he says, no, I'm with you. I mean, he's a legend. He's Orson Welles, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just have a feeling that he probably has that little argument with himself every now. I've never met an actor, an an older actor, who who is happy with himself in his life. I mean, they somehow feel it's very depreciating. They begin to be ashamed of the profession at a certain age yeah. somehow. Yeah. I wonder. I think even Spencer Tracy may have. I seem to remember somewhere that he said this. Not, this is really a silly profession for a man. God knows he was the best at it of anybody. I mean, he couldn't get any better than he was on the screen. He's completely believable. You mean, uh, Tusi, that they always want to do something else? Is that what you mean? Prove something to themselves? Well, I, I mean, guess. I don't know. I mean, I'm not... I mean, I, that's that argument between themselves. Right? Yes, especially if you are Orson Welles. And you have, I mean, you... That you know, that you, you, you believe that you know just as much about directing as the director And about directing. everything else, which he does. He, he does. He, he said I mean, that. He wrote the scenes, to. and he, you know, and rewrote and, them. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> all of it. Some know. of them feel like Wells. I'm sure that they have more to say than what was assigned to them, and they have more to say than just to be uh, another person. You know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, which is what you have to be to be the consummate actor that Wells is. You know. That's the thing about some actors. There's more. They're more interesting than any part that gets written for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it must be a terrible frustration for them. And then Wells has said, I hate to drag this legend around everywhere, which uh, yeah. he has to. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, if you had it to do over again, would you possibly not have the name Tuesday Weld? Not now. <laughs> not now, but is there any, do, you ever, do you see that as having maybe stood in your way a little bit? Because it became yes, a, a joke. I, I'm sure Milton Berle had jokes like Bob Hope I got to about like it. that obstacle, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, because it's, in a way, it's proving that, uh, I mean, anything I do is a little bit better than my name. <laughs> you know? No matter what you're doing, I mean, better than that name. Yes, so yeah. in, in a sense, it's, it's a help. Are there other days of the week in your family, or are you the only... Uh, I'm the only um, one I know of. Uh, yeah. If a few uh, movie were made of your life, who would play your mother? I would. And I will write it. Can you write Yes, yeah. and I will. See, that'd be good. <laughs> but I mean, if we, as we know her now, would it be an Ethel Merman role? I guess I'm obviously thinking of Gypsy and Ethel Merman as a stage mother. No, I guess I'm the only one that could play her, so we'll have to wait a while. Maybe your daughter can play you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, right, you don't want her to do that. No. That's right. Our local stations have a message. We'll be right back. Science says, what you don't use, you lose. Is this where we're heading? By the year 2000, will automation and machines do away with our bodies? Where was I? The integral of X times E. Maybe you're taking life too easy. Maybe you should make things a little harder on yourself. Walk instead of taking the bus. 
Skip oh, the elevator okay. and take the stairs. Okay. Swim, play ball, do calisthenics. I'm ready to go, Z-12. I'm finished. Use your head. Use your body. I have things to do. I would like to go. Before it's too late. Z-12. Is anyone there? Tuesday Well, Dinah Shore, and Milton Berle. If you would like to sample any of them further, you can see Milton Berle at uh, Westbury on October 12th with Eddie Fisher and Melba Moore, I believe. Is that right? And Stan Making, Fisher. See you working great. person. We've got Eddie Fisher with us. And Melba Moore. This right, Westbury right here on Long Island. Yep. For, October for the 12th. whole week. October 12th. To oh, the whole week? Yes. And Dinah Shore has a cookbook where you can learn to make uh, chicken or turkey water chestnut balls. <laughs> I was just looking at your How cookbook. And Tuesday Wells' movie is called A Safe Place. And my name is Dick Cavett, and this tie is for sale. <laughs> and Tuesday night, Anthony Quinn will be here for 90 minutes. And thank you all for being here. We'll see you then. Good night. Time. Cabot promo, air, 10, 8, 71, 11 o'clock, take one. Dirty eye. Cavett and my guests tonight are Milton Berle, Dinah Shore, <coughs> and Tuesday Weld in a rare television appearance. Also Join us. Smith Brothers cough drop. <laughs> well, <laughs> my boy.